Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is my little classic dirt bike. This fine example of a Honda CT70 clone identifies as a Lifan Skygo SG110. It is basically the same thing is my Amigo 125 except it has a semi-automatic transmission and only 110 cc's it has a drum brake in the front rather than a disc I actually already kifed the headlight and speedometer and it is currently on the Amigo uh, the rear end is basically sort of the same except for the way the sprocket set up we'll get to that today what we want to do is get this thing started again I also want to get rid of some of the parts that I'm not going to be using this time around. Looks like we have one of four turn signals still intact. Um, I bought this for $500 with the original title. So I could register it. I already have one for the road. This one's got some sweet knobbies. So we're going to try to concentrate on building one for off-road. It's going to be simplified. And I'm not going to deal with all these lights again. So, with that in mind, we're going to start by removing the signals and getting those wires out of this situation. Eventually, we should be able to plug some things in, flip a switch, and get our kickstart working again. 17 millimeters seems to be getting the job done here. On the rear signals, I had to pop the seat so that I could unplug the wires before I pull them through. Somebody has half of the tail light taped on. It might be all the way taped on. Okay, so it's basically taped on. I'll get those bolts out of there. That's coming off, so I'll try to grab it all at once while I'm here. This is definitely a lot neater than the Amigo, the way they have these spots to clip various electronic components onto. Hmm. I guess there's some good at the end of this anyway. There's not really a whole lot to salvage here from these lights. I keep this one unit that's still together. This one might have. Nah, it ain't even worth it. I'm thinking maybe the bulb wasn't completely shattered like the other two. I might snip the wires off of them and keep those in case I have to make some sort of connection later on for something else. I'm so cheap. Maybe I'll check that light bulb. Maybe not. Tail light is trashed. The bulb is junk. I cut the wire off. 
the tail light is cracked. Yeah, definitely not much there. Well, there's my come up, and here's my letdown. I just cut all of these cables, and I could have just unplugged them and pulled them through. 2006, and they were still thinking ahead for the next guy who had to repair this. Man, I miss those days. If this little mini trail bike receives any sort of lighting in the near future, then it's not going to include this factory headlight turn signal frame. It actually looks like it's bent. Hmm. I think it's only held on by two bolts at the top and then it kind of slides through like a pin into a grommet on this lower clamp on the fork there. That's pretty nifty. You go life in. They make a quality product. They used insert grommets And all sorts of things to get that headlight on there so it wouldn't vibrate. That's nice. Get my screwdriver to pull that one through. Um, I'm going to be taking the horn off. So I'm going to disconnect that from this frame. And it looks like I also have to pull the brake and throttle through separately. I think they're on one side. Yeah. It's not like anything broke off over there and it's missing. The front brake is on the right. And the rear brake is pedal only. That's one of the things I love about these urban antlers. You can drop them down when you're taking your grippers off. This left side one is getting me with a handlebar mounted choke. So it does have to come off. I think I have to loosen up the housing a little more. It has that little piton that goes into the handlebar. I am the proud new owner of this slightly bent headlight turn signal frame. I think it's upside down it actually goes this way I'm gonna get the horn off of that I'll test it out on the Amigo see if it works might plug in different we'll see um, I'm gonna lose this whole left side control cluster we have a switch for a high and low beam, turn signal, horn, and a handlebar mounted choke. We're going to be going manual there. This choke cable is pretty sweet. It's got double barrel ends, so it's kind of a quick release. This is from the housing side. On the handlebars I have the same thing down here on this choke lever it's gonna take two hands but I'll just pull the choke up 
the cable out and we'll be done with that. I left the speedometer cable attached at one end after I removed the headlight and speedometer assembly. It still works so I'll be keeping it. I just have to Oh, it's already loose. Remove it from the hub. It's got quite a few threads. Look at that. It's even greased. Kind of weird looking. Not going to lie. This next part is going out to my friend Randy Gumpet. He needs one of these racks and that would be a lot like the Grey Goat himself asking me for a part. I'm not gonna say no. So looks like a 17 millimeter and a 10. Not a bad little rack. It's probably better than the one that's on the Amigo, but I don't need it. Knobby tires. Kind of a strip down thing. I'm picturing a little CT70 dirt bike here. Here's the bolts. Let's go into here. I don't know if I can reuse those or if they have to go with the rack. I think they go with these. I'll look into it. Uh, I vision a handle only without the rack. Something like the ATC's from the 80's you know, like the little three wheelers and four wheelers they just have the little grab bar back here I'll see if I can get one that doesn't have the flare on it but if that's what it is hey we'll make it happen heck I'll build one if I have to just like I did on the Z50R where I removed the rack I figured I'd have a little room behind this nut and the flange that holds the exhaust on, but not that much. I'll take a gander down below, and we're not even fully attached at the head, I think. I'm just missing a nut and the flange might be bent. Kind of makes you wonder who was working on this thing. Hmm. Not me, that's for sure. Yep. Looks like I got had here. I didn't even notice this. They have a bolt going through this part of the head instead of a stud. The bolt's bent. I don't know what condition the other side's in. I'll just get this off, but. Is what it is, right? Let's keep moving forward. No wonder it bent. Looks like they used a screw. They even made a cut washer. They were real determined to make this work. Uh, I don't know. It is. 
a light fan. All the gears seem to work. I'll look into a new top end for this instead of trying to rig that up again. I haven't even tried to back the other stud out to see what kind of condition it's in. That's not cool though. Not at all. I'm over on the left side of things now. We're going to look down underneath the engine. I already inspected the other side and it didn't look too bad. Oh boy. We definitely have some sort of seepage on this side. I don't see any cracks where the foot peg bracket is so that's a good thing. We do have this shifter seal. It's kind of hard to tell it's just everywhere. It looks like there's a little tiny hole or something right here but that should just be the stator cover it could have taken a hit I think there's a chain in there it goes to the starter that could have snapped I don't know this might be a good candidate for another engine I've never really rebuilt one of these. It did, it does run. Like we might even start it without the exhaust just because why not at this point? And uh, I don't know, it shifts and stuff. I can't ride it far because you know, the chain's loose. No big deal, there's some tensioners there. The swing arm bushings. You see the movement are completely shot. I think the wheel bearings might be all right. The sprocket is held on with a ring clip that holds well I'll show you the extra wheel I got with this it's got king stones on it anyway there is some value here you can buy hubs for these you can actually buy better ones or you can just replace these little rubber pieces that the sprocket goes into these come out I think I used a screwdriver to get one out before flathead but it'll get under it okay so these things wear out and they can be replaced we're gonna go ahead and order a set because I don't think when it's all put together it's supposed to have any side-to-side -side play where this one's completely worn out and this one's already moving might be who of a fella there is supposed to be a ring clip that goes around here 
and holds the sprocket on. You can see on this hub that it either broke off when someone tried to remove the ring or those rubber blocks wore out and this busted the ring and took the flange with it but that is what's hiding under there I noticed this chain guard is busted let's just hold on with the zip tie in the back it still has the bolt in the front we're gonna be losing it anyway so this is as good a time as any I have a clip of this thing running so at the end of the video I'll just toss that in there that way you can see what I saw when I bought it I didn't really notice all of this yeah that is incredibly terribly bogus no matter how you look at it I see needs some serious attention I don't think we can finesse that uh, gas tank right here it does have some fuel oh yeah I wouldn't say it has good fuel battery's probably dead all this pretty stuff and it really ain't worth the lick at least not right now Hey, the shocks are good, all the brakes work, and we're not into total hub or fork replacement. The handlebars are alright, where we're going to get rid of a few things and go sort of custom. I don't see why we couldn't do something else. Might have to extend that brake line, but that shouldn't be too difficult. On oh, a mechanical drum. I already have the bushings to fix that swing arm. The rubber blocks, that sprocket. We're talking like, I don't know, 30 bucks top end delivered. This engine, that is going to be our big kahuna. All right, we're going to have to do something about that for sure. There's no doubt about it. I'm still going to throw that clip in of this thing completely assembled and running, but uh, let's see if we can't fire it up right now. I have it wired up so that the only thing connected is the kill switch, the ignition, and yeah that's it turn the gas on i'm going to have to hold the choke manually
neutral. I tried to put it in gear. shifter all four gears too I got to looking up prices on a brand new 125 replacement engine started on the Zon went over to eBay and then I stumbled over to marketplace and now we have parts bike number two. This is a 2016 Apollo 125. I'm not sure of which exact model it is. They had a few of them. It does have the inverted fork. It's actually pretty beefy. Everything seems to be here mechanically on the frame except the frame itself is no good. Uh, somebody attempted a repair. It looks like it busted out right behind the pivot for the swing arm and they accidentally welded the brake pedal with it. Not that this couldn't be loosened up and recovered, but, you know, you still got all that. I don't really need a pit bike. It's not my thing. But I couldn't say no to this for $250. That's about what a new engine will cost. So for the same amount, I got a brand new, this is unrun, 125 four-speed manual. It has some oil in it, but it was never started. Brand new carbon everything. This is probably the $40 budget exhaust that's available. That rear shock looks like it might be aftermarket. It's got a tank, brand new. Never any gas in it. It came with plastics. They're just not the right ones for this frame. Uh, if you try to put them on where they go, they don't sit right or line up with anything on this rear loop. It's really small. Too small for me anyway. Get that sweet number plate. The rest of that stuff. Tube. Uh, here's the good part. These are 
the row two pit bike handlebars you can get these on Amazon they're about 40 bucks they're not bad I have these on my BT 200x brand new new grips new clutch perch and lever new clutch cable it hasn't been hooked up eh, some risers and things this may have had one inch bars I don't know might be able to use that air filter for the carb not the right motor oil but maybe for break-in little chain break a chain it's like another clutch or brake lever clampage not too bad Not well, for 250 bucks anyway uh, I'm gonna start breaking this thing down see if maybe I could resell a few parts recover a few dollars and who knows where we're going custom I think this rear loop comes off. This would make a nice grab bar. No. Oh, you can get it apart. Let's see what we can use. That's pretty dope. This whole subframe comes off. by removing four 10 millimeter bolts. I like that. This like is and isn't the correct 125 for a pit bike. It has the kickstart with no electric start but they're not very high performance they do make other versions that are so we're actually going to be doing this little engine some serious justice here um removed the flange so that i could get this high performance exhaust system off turn the light on here look at that a little bit of surface rust but I don't see any carbon of sort because just like I stated this engine has never even been started This is beautiful. Yeah, we're really saving this thing. When I dropped the exhaust off, uh, there was no gasket. It was in the box of parts that came with it, but it wasn't installed. I'm trying to remove the foot peg bracket so that I can get that out of the equation. It's not bolted to the bottom of the engine, but it should be able to come off of the frame as a separate entity. Unfortunately, a few of the nuts and bolts are cross-threaded you know what else is cross-threaded this bolt 
that mounts the engine to the frame. I haven't tried that one yet, but at least we could release the tabs. One of them's going to be good, I guess. I hope. This kind of stinks. But. Oh well. I was hoping to keep the hardware for this. It's kind of a nice long bolt with the threads on the end. Um, you can buy new ones, but hey, I like saving everything I can when I do this. I'm going to salvage this ignition switch. It seems to work fine. I'll just leave it there for now. I unplugged it from the harness. And I removed all of the zip ties. I had to disconnect a few things and reconnect them after I unlooped them from the frame. Everything looks good to go. I even have the breather, CDI, all that good stuff. Nothing should be holding me up. I have that one bolt down below. I got the nut off. I'll just use a pair of pliers. I had some here somewhere. And I'll yank that sucker out. Put that foot peg bracket on. The engine might not drop. Uh, I'll try to get this with one hand and cradle it with the other. I just have my knee propped against it. It didn't fall yet. That's yeah, not gonna. I'll double check. Make sure there's nothing else holding me up. It's just kind of clamped in there. Yep. I need two hands and a little bit of force. I'm going to just pull it forward and yank it out. No, sir. I ain't going to get it. She's still wedged in there pretty good. Since I can't drop the foot pegs down, we can't clear the mounts. The engine casing itself hits when you try to go forward. So, we're just going to remove the mounts. It's doing the same thing. Over there on the other side. Check this out. Boy, yo, yo, yoing. It's just kind of dangling on that bracket now. I only had to remove the front bolt and it allowed the mounts to pivot now I can just yank it out I should probably clear a spot for it first okay so it had one 10 millimeter bolt holding the foot peg bracket on. It was easy enough to back that out and hold the engine with the other hand and just lifted it up 
and placed it directly on the workbench. I spun things around and laid it down so that I could nab the front brake assembly. Stuck a piece of cardboard in the caliper so that it can't activate and press the piston. Um, now you can really see the extent of the damage. It looks like the foot peg bracket itself originally snapped off and then there was an attempt to add that metal plate to hang them from again in the process things got a little out of hand and that's how the brake lever got permanently affixed. Up here, where the engine hangs from the top, that took a hit too. Probably over time, along the bottom, you can feel where there's a spacer that goes to the middle of the bolt, and that had been torquing downward, so only a matter of time until that puppy snapped. I'd pretty much call that no good, but I'll leave the shock. Good. A good rear sprocket, a rear caliper, rotor. Tires are great. Hmm. Swing arm. That seems to be all there. And a fork. Surely somebody's going to want this. Just not me. I already sold off what was left of that pit bike. I got rid of the fenders, the exhaust, the wheels, suspension, all of that jazz for the lump sum of $60. I wanted a quick sale. That means I'm into... This brand new 125 four speed manual and all of these goodies for 190 now. We're at 500 on the CT70 clone. $690 in, um, we have two engines. This is a runner and this can definitely be repaired. It's a life in and it's a four speed semi-automatic. It has a lot going for it. I already ordered the bushings for the swing arm and it was only $15 for a set of these sprocket cush drives. We're going to try to keep it cheap. This seat is definitely going to be a bit of a challenge. Now that we have our engine sourced, this is going to be the next big event. Oh boy. If I have to replace it, I know these are about $100 and I don't know if that includes shipping, so 
<sighs> we'll see what happens. Either way, we're going to end up with a sweet classic dirt bike. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.